So I thought some of you might appreciate seeing um, my thought process when it comes to writing microtonal music, and hopefully it can um, help you in your own endeavors writing music, um, uh, you know, particularly microtonal music. Um, you know, just some of the things I like to think about when I'm writing it, and um, uh, you know, some of the techniques I might use. Um, so I've pulled up a bass patch here on a synth. Let's just make like a, a trancey type sort of bass line. So I, I'm, I'm going to try to keep things relatively simple for this video. I'm not doing anything too complicated, but... Um, just, just write something as simple and then I'll sort of be able to focus more on the individual Zen harmonic intervals. So I essentially just got like a super saw with a, um, a low pass filter um, going lower and lower across it. So let's try that. So this is an octave. This is the closest thing we have to have to a, a minor third in our tuning, um, which is a bit sharper than we're used to, but it sounds quite in tune. Um, this is a, a neutral 7th, but um, it's actually uh, the same as the minor 7th in 15 equal temperament. So it's a perfect 4th from there. So let's try that and then compare it to the harmonic 7th, which is one, one step further down. So that's um, a very flat minor 7th that's um, in tune with the 7th harmonic. So let's try this one first and then compare. I like that. That sounds cool. I like the sound of the uh, the neutral sound. Let's make it so it doesn't go quite quite as far down. The filter doesn't cut down quite as much. Let's try that. That's really weird. That's interesting too. Uh, I think we're going to stick with the more familiar uh, seventh, or, although when I say more familiar, it is very clearly a um, a neutral seventh, but it, it is because it is the closest thing to a perfect fourth in 15 Edo from a minor third, um, it sort of gels a bit better with what we expect to hear. So I just added a bit of delay to it there. Uh, cool, so let's get uh, like an electric piano sort of thing going on. So uh, I'm just opening it here. You can't see because um, it's not capturing it, but you just have to trust. That's our electric piano. And we're gonna set it to 15 equal temperature tuning. Cool. All right. Now I have to find what note it is because um, often they'll tune to use um, different key centers between different synthesizers and samplers and things. But before we do that, we want to set our piano roll. So the cool thing about Reaper in particular as a digital audio workstation, so that's the one I use, Reaper, um, is you don't just have this regular piano roll layout. You also have um, this sort of, uh, I don't even know, it's this matrix of like which notes are playing when um and most interestingly you have this customizable piano roll so you can go in here and you can write whatever you want anywhere um, but we're going to open one that i've made earlier specifically for 15 edo and this is uh, a klysmic layout i believe it's called um and so it's uh, a layout um, generated by stacking minor thirds rather than stacking perfect fifths um, and so I'm not really familiar with looking at this layout, so forgive me if I have trouble finding intervals, but, um, that's why I chose to do 15 equal temperament as well, is it's something I'm not too familiar writing in. Um, so, you know, a bit, a bit of a, bit of a journey for all of us. So. Okay. 45.5. 
unfortunately, they line up. So. So let's try. An octave here, and then um, something really interesting you can do in 15 Edo, one of my favorite chords, is this chord. So, made, uh, sorry, perfect fifth. Um, you can hear how wobbly it is in um, 15 equal temperament because it's so sharp. Uh, a minor third. Um, and then you add this interval on top which has a really strange Zen harmonic sound because it's essentially really close to a harmonic seventh, really close to a seven on four ratio. But if we look at how we construct it, we go minor third, major third, and a whole tone. Um, and now this is a really wide whole tone. Um, it's 240 cents, so it's 40 cents sharper. So it's almost a quarter tone sharper than we're used to hearing as a whole tone, but we still hear it as a whole tone um, because we, we can build it from two very sharp fifths. So we go. If we go up a fifth from here, then we'll end up uh, down an octave, then we end up with this fourth here. So this interval really is a bona fide. Um, major second like it is a, a it is really a whole tone you can sort of hear that has that sort of you know one a major second minor third sound um and so because we're stacking a whole tone on top of the fifth we hear this chord as sounding sort of like a, a minor six chord you know a minor chord with a major sixth stacked on top but that's not what it is at all, because really this 960 cent interval is 60 cents sharper uh, than you know the normal major sixth we'd be used to hearing in um, 12 equal temperament. So it's ba barely a sixth at all. It's it's more than a quarter tone. You know, it's headed towards a whole semitone sharp. So this chord has a really interesting quality now because it sounds kind of like a minor six chord, um, but this this. This note here has a sort of intermediate quality between being a sixth and a seventh. So let's play around with that chord. In fact, let's go to the fifth, to the neutral seventh, uh, which I'm also calling a minor seventh, um, because it's it's sort of intermediate between being well, it's it it's both. It's very neutral sounding because of how sharp it is, but at the same time, it sounds like it's a perfect fifth above the minor third. And that's because the minor third is sharp and the perfect fifth is also sharp. So the sharpness adds up to make this sound like a neutral interval. But um, let's take this to um, this, whatever you want to call it, major sixth uh, sub minor seventh interval. And then our um, minor third. Uh, so that has a, a sort of porcupine scale sort of sound because um, if we look here the porcupine scale is built by just stacking um, neutral seconds, neutral second. Uh, so it has a porcupine-y sound. So um, that's an interesting little motif we could throw in. So let's try something different this time. sounding with this sort of very flat second because uh, remember we're in 15 equal temperament so each step is um, smaller than a semitone 
So it can have like a very dark, gritty sort of resolving sound. <laughs> It's almost a little too dark uh, considering the rest of the scale. So maybe we'll stick to our porcupine idea and just stick to our chain of uh, neutral seconds here. do this this doesn't sound so good in the context so. um, and that's that's one of the things that's worth keeping in mind is sometimes you can introduce too many notes at once and get a little too complicated it's nice to sort of think in terms of scales um, and try to use um, you know um, familiar notes that you've introduced if you can rather than introducing too many new notes at once, especially because they're all microtonal intervals. So we're not used to hearing most of them. So I've got a sort of vaguely porcupine sort of thing going on here, which is a scale that works really well uh, in 15 equal temperament. So let's try doing something a little different again. Uh, and let's try a sort of um, familiar resolution idea. So we'll move this for a moment. We'll make this the same uh, for three bars. And then the last bar, we'll do a sort of familiar resolving idea. Where we take that. Let's listen to this. Okay, cool. So So I'm doing sort of a, a flat six to five to one, um, sort of, you know, um, very familiar, uh, almost like a tritone substitution to dominant idea, except because it's realized in 15 equal temperament, which doesn't really have a normal chain of fifths, uh, everything sounds very different um, and Zen harmonic, but um, because it's a familiar idea, our brain gels with it anyway, and is, is happy to just accept it for being what it is. So. Let's try this. So that sounds cool. Um, we want to offset these a little so that maybe we make that come in there. Cool, I'm happy with that. And so we just make this on the final chord. something like this. Uh, so yeah, like 
like I said, flat six to five to one, except um, this isn't actually a flat six. There's not really such thing as a sixth in 15 equal temperament uh, in the normal way that we'd think of it. Or at least this isn't, you know, a normal sounding sixth. Um, Let's try this. Cool, that sounds good to me. So let's add, let's add some drums just while we're at it to get things a bit more interesting. Um, and so I'm not gonna complicate things too much. I'm just gonna pick some drums uh, that, you know, a, a drum loop that I like the sound of and um, not bother writing my own, because that's not really the point of this video. So that will probably be a nice tip with what we're listening to. Uh, and we get something like, that'll probably sound good enough. So let's try this. the sound of that that sounds really good and it actually doesn't even sound too too microtonal as enharmonic um, for 15 equal temperament um, and, and that's one of the things that you can really um, achieve by using sort of familiar music theory like I did here so despite the fact that all those intervals except the major thirds and minor sixths um, are tuned very differently from 12 equal temperament the fact that the movement of um, intervals is familiar and ends up in a familiar place, um, gives it a really familiar feel. So uh, we can really ground it in a familiar tonality. And so then when we throw in our more Z harmonic intervals, they feel really new and fresh without, um, you, you know, without losing their refreshing quality and getting a little bit harsh on the ears. Um, cool, so why don't we add uh, another synthesizer of some sort, some, some sort of plucking sound or something. So. Let's find a pluck. That sounds interesting enough. Um, and I'll put it in 15 equal temperament. Uh, and I'll set our scale on the side here. Uh, we might make this one I don't know, I'm kind of feeling triplets or something. I usually get quite experimental with my rhythms and things. That is probably a little too loud. Maybe, maybe we won't do triplets. Maybe uh, we'll just do really fast intervals. Maybe we'll just play the minor triad on this one. Um, and then we'll add a neutral second. So you can say I'm trying to keep things simple and, and a lot of the time that's a really good idea with um, Zen harmonic music, especially with something like 15 equal temperament, which is very strange. Um, especially if you're starting out, it's, it's a good idea to keep things simple. And a lot of the time in a lot of my other tracks, um, I do get very overcomplicated with things, um, but I'm trying to just keep things simple here and just focus on this sort of central motif that I've worked on. So this has a very um, nice Zen harmonic appeal. This sort of, um, what, or what do you call it? The, um, Porcupine tetrachord. You know, just it's just these neutral steps all the way up. Okay, so let's try this. How far does this go? 
Goodness me. Okay, we've got a long way to go. Um, and then we'll just fit this to our, our chords again. that and then I'll make this like this uh, so this is our flat six and five chord like I was doing earlier um, and then we might want to accentuate uh, somewhere here so you know on the third chord instead of the fifth we'll accentuate that harmonic seventh so that, that's a very zen sound. Let, let me bring it up a little. A very zen harmonic sound. Um, it's very unfamiliar, but if you look at it, uh, there's nothing too much complicated going on. In 15 equal temperament, this is our minor third. This is the closest thing we have to a perfect fourth. Harmonic seventh, uh, aka major sixth. And a neutral second. So everything is quite easy to think about. We've just got this porcupine tetrachord and this uh, interval, uh, whatever you call it, major, the very sharp major sixth or very flat minor seventh. Uh, and then we'll do a similar thing here. So you can see it's it's coming together fairly nicely, I think. Um, so let's do maybe like a, a lead. Let's let's finish this off by adding a lead, um, and then I might call this track done, um, or, or at least you know this demo track, and maybe I'll finish it off and release it uh, in future at some point. Um, but let's find a lead sound that we like, and I'm not going to make the same mistake as before. Uh, this time we're going to turn the volume down. And usually I make my own synth patches and things as well. But in this case, I'm just picking ones from the bank because I um, don't want to spend too much time doing that. Oh, I don't like that at all. That's kind of fun. Cool. So tune it to the equal temperament. All right. Let's write a little lead over the top of this. Uh, in fact, cool. Let's write a little lead that goes for this duration. Um, so we'll load our 15 litre Klyzmic here. delete it and try something else. Again, I can just copy that and um, modify it a bit on the second. Uh, the it's not really a, uh, it's two bars, so the second set of bars. You know what I might do. 
I think that this isn't quite interesting enough. Oh no, it's not interesting enough. Or whatever shall I do? Well, quite simply. Something like that. Because it'll give us um, more chordal material to work with. So. Uh, because now we can make this bar fit the new chords we put in. Cool, so let's try this. Uh, we know which chord we're playing here. We're playing a, you know, whatever the equivalent of a flat six chord is, the, the one that's one step above um, the fifth chord. Cool, so I've written us out a little melody here. Let's try, let's just listen to the whole thing. Let's, let's not even listen to it in action and just hope that it sounds any good. And there we have it. So I think that that, that works as an idea. And, um, you know, from there we could either continue to work on it or, or throw it away and start something new. But I think um, as an idea in 15 equal temperament, that, that's definitely a good starting point for a piece of music. Um, You know, I, I could definitely see myself using this to write a piece of music. What would you build on as a, as a song? Let's, let's, let's listen through once more, but I've um, removed that stuff that's overcomplicating it a little. Uh, made a little bit more room. Um, but yeah, you could sort of see what I was doing and in terms of thinking of what intervals are familiar to us, what intervals um, are a bit different, how we can use intervals that are sort of, you know, in between the intervals we're familiar with, like... Uh... 
you know, we've got the octave, we've got a familiar fifth that's quite sharp. We've got this, what is essentially a minor seventh because it's a perfect fifth above our minor third. But because the minor third is so sharp and the um, perfect fifth is so sharp, when you add them together, you get a neutral seventh instead. And then our, um, you know, what sounds like a minor sixth because it has that tritony sound um, against the minor third, which um, makes it a little bit more colorful and um, tense. Um, and yet it really genuinely sounds like a seventh. And so chords like this, which is one of my favorite chords in um, 15 equal temperament, uh, you know, if you can find these sorts of chordal structures, you can sort of build whole tracks like I have here around that idea. Um, and so I'm not doing anything harmonically too complicated. I'm not modulating. I'm really only using that and maybe a couple of other chords here and there. Um, and yet I've, I've been able to build something that I think is some um, reasonably compelling. Um, you know, it tells a story. There's some interest here. Um, it's very Zen harmonic and yet ties into some familiar ideas. And, and I think that's one of the key takeaways of, um, at least how I write microtonal music and Zen harmonic music is rather than trying to get too into the weeds and overcomplicated, um, with using all these new theories and, you know, completely throwing away the perfect fifth and throwing away all conventional music theory and throwing away tonality altogether. I say, okay, let's keep a lot of those ideas and just try to insert this Zen harmonic sound into those familiar ideas. And so, you know, when I write music with um, 17 equal temperament, which I might show off doing some of in the future, um, you, you know, you, you might find uh, that it, it's, yeah, well, it's, di it's diatonic. So it's capable of very similar ideas to 12 equal temperament. Um, but with a lot of very unfamiliar intervals um, also available. Um, and so, for example, if you move between a major and a minor chord, the difference between the major third and the minor third is a neutral second. Um, and so if you do sort of chromatic passages where um, major and minor intervals, you know, minor intervals become augmented or major intervals become diminished um, between, you know, each, uh, it, you know, between the major and minor counterparts, um, you'd end up with some really interesting microtonal sounds that just from applying regular uh, familiar music theory. Um, and so of course you can uh, apply a um, new music theory as well as you go, but um, it's good to do a bit of a mix, I think. And I, I think that's sort of what I've done here and what I've shown off as an idea. So hopefully this, um, this was a helpful track to watch me build. And it's not the most exciting track in the world, but we'll give it one more listen uh, and then I'll say goodbye. Right, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, I'll, I'll do more of these in the future and hopefully get a little bit better at them. Uh, normally, I, I, I'm a little bit faster at producing music and um, make better stuff. Um, but uh, you know, the pressure of trying to do it on camera and try to explain what I was doing uh, can sort of get in the way a little. Um, not to say that I'm amazing at making music really quickly or anything, it's just, um, you know, having to think of what to say and explain my thought process and what I'm doing uh, is definitely a, a challenge that I haven't had to work with before. So, um, you know, if you enjoyed this, make sure to uh, like and subscribe um, because there will be more stuff like this in the future. Um, and yeah, 
have a good one. Let me know if uh, you want to see more of this sort of thing.